Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. You're watching our cloud school. Today we are here to discuss about an special activity type with Azure Data Factory. The activity name is Azure. Activity name is Get Metadata Activity. I will log on to Azure portal to have a demonstration on this particular activity type. Into Azure Data Factory instance, which we'll be using for this particular demonstration. Now, metadata activities you can define it within the pipeline. So I'm going to define a new pipeline for this demonstration. So add new resource pipeline, new pipeline, and that will open the canvas as always for where we can define our pipeline activities. Now, as we are talking about the activity, which is of metadata activity that you can find it under this general group. So here in the activities panel, you have different groups of activities and metadata activity is a type of general activity. So you will find that activity here. Now from here, you can drag this get metadata activity, right? And this activity will can help you retrieving the information about the file or the content which you are supposed to deal. So it's like metadata is like data about the data, right? Now, if we go to the settings of this metadata activity, which you can find it here at the lower section, here are some general information like you can define the name and the description of the activity like we do for any other activity type. Then you have the timeout and the retry count. If you would like to specify how many number of time it should retry in case if it fails, right? By default, the retry count is zero. Moving on, uh, important settings which you have under the settings tab. So here you have to define the source of your metadata activity on which source this metadata should work source as in the location where your files are there and it this activity is supposed to retrieve the metadata of those files right so to define the data set either you can choose the existing data set if you have it already if not then you can click on new to define a new data set. So let me create a new data set in case if you're not aware about how to create a data, data set. So I'm going to create a blob storage data set. The reason for that is all my files which I would like to deal with this particular activity for this example, I have it under this storage account. So this is my storage account input container where I have various different types of file like CSV, JSON, zip file, XML. So all the different types of file I have it. now. In the very first example, what I want to do is I would like to get the information about this CSV file, which is the very first CSV file using the get metadata activity. So for that, coming back to the activities panel, I'm going to define the data set. So select, I'm selecting the Azure data storage because that is the type of data set we would like to have it. Now, depending upon the file type or the file format, you which, which you would like to deal with it, you can specify the file format. For example, if you are supposed to deal with all the CSV files only or only the XML file or JSON file, then you can select the appropriate file. But in case if you would like to refer to various different types of file at the same time, then binary is the right choice of the file type or the file format. So I'm going to choose the binary as in file format. Next, I'll, I'll give it a name to this data set. We'll call it as a binary source and then link service. So we need to provide the link service, which will have a connectivity or the configuration to connect to this particular data source, which is Azure Blob Storage. We already have created these many link services in the past. So I'm going to select this link service, which we already created. If you would like to verify the link service, you can click on this pencil icon that will give you details of your link service. Now, moving on as we have our link service already set up, which is working fine. I'm going to click on this browse option. So this will use the link service in my data source, which I'm trying to create and it will browse all the content, including the containers and it will display all those containers. So let's click on the container where we have our files. So I'm going to click on this input container and that will load all our files. As we can see, this is showing all the same number of files, which we have it here in the Azure storage account. Now, as we are talking about the very first file, I'm going to select this particular file name. But in case if you are not dealing with only single file, if you are supposed to deal with multiple files, then you may not want to select a specific file. I'll show you that example as well. So let's first of all deal with a very 
specific file and uh, hence I'm going to select this first file which is a CSV file. Now with that our data set is ready let's click on OK and that will define the data set which means that our data set is been configured on our get metadata activity and here we have the other settings like filter by loss modified in case if you would like to modify filter out the file retrieve option from this specific duration for example if the file is last modified between this time range only then select the file if you want to do that then you can specify the time range between these two fields now moving on the next field which we have which is a mandatory is the field list because without field list if I try and validate it, it will, the validation will fail so let me show you that as you can see that the validation is failing right now it says that it, you have to provide the field list so what is the field list in the metadata the field list will help you retrieving the information which you would like to get it as part of the metadata result for an example I would like let's say if you would like to get the md5 contents which is hash content of the file so it will read the content of the file in the, as in the md5 if you would like to check the whether the file exists or not if you would like to check the file name or if you would like to retrieve the file name if you would like to get the file type class modified and the size all those properties basically you can add it at least one property you need to add it as in the field list so let me give it add the file name or the item name and then item type which is going to be file type and I would add the size as well and let's add the loss modified as well right so what is going to happen now is using this data source get metadata activity will try to connect to the file and it will retrieve all these information related to the file and this is the information which may may we may want to use it for the further implementation so let's debug this or maybe let's validate first of all as we have set our field list the validation is going to be succeeded as expected now i'm going to click on validate or debug so that i can debug my pipeline and this pipeline will run this get metadata activity and should return all those attributes which i'm looking for from this particular file which we have provided in the data set so our activity is successfully completed so if i click on this output section and if i expand it you will find that we have the item name as the name of the file item type is the file it could be a item type could be file or folder then size this is the size of the data in which we have it in this file last modified data now if you look at this last modified data it would be somehow similar to this particular date right then you have the affected runtime and the other system details like uh, integration runtime and other details which this activity or the pipeline activity has used right so that's the other information but these are the four attributes which we have asked file metadata to retrieve and then now what I can do is I can use the copy activity let's say to copy the file from one location to other location using this particular activity name the reason for that is because now as we are getting this file name so I, what I can do is item name I can use this item name as in the file name and I can specify in my copy data activity as in source and it can copy the file I'll show you an example with that but let's before that let's take an example wherein I would like to retrieve all the files which are available inside the container which could be of any type for example or type could be CSV zip file XML JSON or it could be any type right with that what I'm going to do is I would like to modify my data set because right now if you look at this data set if I open that it is targeting to a specific file type so I'm not going to retrieve a specific file type so uh, let me just remove this file name right now to get all the files what you need to do is you need to have a special type of attribute right let me just add a new attribute and here you can see that we have a child item so what child item will do is depending upon the folder location which you have provided in your data source within that folder what whichever number of child item you have it the metadata activity will provide the list of all those child items or the metadata of all those files which is available in this child item now if you might have pay attention to 
this drop down list the child item was field was not available for selection when i was pointing to a specific file location so let me show you what i mean by that so when i had this particular file name given in the data source which means that my data source is pointing to a specific file location and if i try you can see that there is no child item selection is available which the reason for that is this time my data source is pointing to a specific file and it is the type as in the file type hence the data type is not going to be a uh, child item is not going to be available because the data set is itself is pointing to a specific file and file cannot have its child right a folder type can have a child so which right so if you are having the same situation wherein you are not able to find this child item selection so the reason could be because your data set is pointing to a specific files so you may want to remove this file selection from this data source so your data source is going to be pointing to a specific folder or a container and then after that if you try and check the attributes which is child item then it will be available so let me just clean this up we don't need these items right now i just want the child items to be available let me just validate the pipeline so just to revise what we are doing with get metadata we are trying to grab all the childs available within this source location which is the input container let's run the metadata activity so if i expand this now you would see that we have all our child item and within this child item we have got the data such as these right now you might say that okay we have got the name of the child item and the file type and the type as in file as well but what about the uh, metadata of these file itself well uh, metadata of these files are not going to be available because it is just retrieving the information about the or the high level information about the child but not the metadata of the child itself now if you would like to retrieve the metadata of the child itself it may possible based depending upon the result which is a collection here as you can see child item is a collection on this collection you can run a for each loop and then for if using the for each loop for each file you can get the metadata for individual files if you would like to do that so right so next what we want to do is or what we can do is you may want to let's say copy a file from this location to a sql server or this location to any other container or folder within the same container so all those activities you can perform with the help of metadata because now you got the information about the files as well right so that is it in this video in the next video i'm going to talk about the filter data activity so, and we will know that how we can use the filter data activity to filter a specific file type because now as of now you can see that in our result we got all the different type of file type which could be csv zip file xml but what if you would like to filter out only the csv files or even the csv file with this name right if that is the case then you may want to use the metadata activity with filter so that is what we are going to look at in our next demonstration i hope you have found this useful if it is please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already thanks for watching it see you in the next video